And it wouldn't be the first time it happened. Oh, David I'm Letterman has done it. Kool-Aid. David Letterman's <laughs> done it, but then I called him on it and he said, you know what? I have to be honest. I heard Howard's mother on the air. He incorporated his mother and I decided to put my mother on the show. That's a man. He stood up and he fucking said, yeah, I admire. I don't care if somebody takes something from my show. Just be honest about it. That's all. Don't fucking call me on the phone and go, eh, eh, you just say everybody steals from you. No, I don't. Jerry Seinfeld never stole from me. <laughs> I don't say everyone. I said, you did, Jay. You creep. And I don't ask my staff to drink any fucking Kool-Aid. The fact of the matter is, go to the tape. I sent my tapes off to Jay Leno. Did you? Yeah. Oh. I said, it, you, you're calling me a liar. Here's tapes of me doing this shit way before you've done it, asshole. But where John comes off fucking saying shit about me? He's a dickwad, as Fred has always said. <laughs> and Ralph called me like yesterday and said, you know what? I'm glad you finally woke up about John. Yeah. See, unlike most people on this show, I don't drink the John Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. The John I, cocktail. And, and I love the one of the comments on Facebook, not to, uh, you know... Pour salt. Pour but. salt on the wounds. So, well, he was there. Well, John, I was here, too. And I remember, along with Howard and Jackie, writing the stuff that predated anything that Jay Leno yeah, did. Yeah, and no offense so, to John. John didn't check write memories. jack shit on this show ever. He was yeah, never John a writer. Wasn't in a, you didn't see John in those meetings. The cat who wrote this stuff is sitting right here. Fred. And Jackie. And how? And me. That's it. The three of us. There wasn't some fucking... I don't have 20 writers. And we didn't take it from anybody else. Unless someone can produce tape that we did, then, yeah. then I'll admit it. <laughs> I only wish there was. I only wish there was somebody to steal from. The problem with I drink- wish Jay Leno would do something I could steal. Yeah, that you could take. But there isn't. Yeah. <laughs> the problem with drinking John's Kool Aid is you have to buy it. <laughs> yeah. No, you have to have somebody else buy it, and then you drink it. But I'm just done with him. You know, it's like a, you know, I hear invited you, him I will- and his wife to my wedding. You know, yeah. and, I, and out of respect to Beth, because she likes his wife. But I, you know what? I, I don't I like his wife too. Good I think for maybe you. she's I don't getting want, hit with some shrapnel. You want to know something? I don't well, want to you know, know her. Couple, I don't want to know him. Yeah. I'm, I'm done with the whole family. I mean, you know, right. you yeah. can't get her without yeah. him. I'm not right. interested in either one of them at, at this point, quite frankly. And really, I mean, I can't tell Beth who to be friends with. That's that's for sure. But gee whiz, I've asked her, please don't comment about her and don't invite her to anything that I'm at. You want to have her to something, fucking make sure I'm not there. Mm-hmm. But I don't want John involved. I don't, and I just, I just want to be done with him because I'm so insulted by what he wrote and so aggravated by his idiocy. Like, there's no need to get involved. I mean, He's friends with both guys. Good for him. Two influential guys in the yeah, business. Yeah, you know, there have been people who have had friendships with two people who are enemies of each other, and they yeah. haven't managed to piss off either one. Yeah, I mean, just use your head, man. You're in business. Might come a day where Jay gets rid of you entirely. You might need to come to me and say, hey, Howard, do you know of anybody who can uh, use me? Or can you use me on your channels? Or is there some way I can be involved? You might need that. Don't be arrogant. Don't be a fucking asshole. You play your play your cards right, and you're friends with everyone. But I know what happened. I'm out of my house, freaked him out. Mm. He's jealous of me. He's jealous of my life. He's jealous. You know, he's a jealous guy, and it freaked him. So they had to give the attack. He's a small timer, small potatoes. And quite frankly, I don't even know why I'm giving him so much fucking time, but. But you know what? It's good radio. So it's a big part of the show a lot of years ago. Yeah. Well, well I'm, I'm, giving, I'm giving him way too much credit him. here. I mean, you know, listen. I mean, for me to carry on means it matters to me. Now, I don't read this Facebook page, but he's, he's claiming that, that bitch like jaywalking, he did first. Leno Not did Jay, first. Yeah, Leno did first. Wow. He ha- Jay, John has proof. Well, he probably has a lot of time. That's probably what they have him doing, archiving. Investigating. Yeah. What John doesn't understand about how those TV shows work, it doesn't even have to be the head writer. It could be a writer's assistant commuting to work one day. He hears that bit sure. on this show. He goes in, he suggests it because he wants to seem like a big guy. Then mm-hmm. it goes up the ladder. A head writer takes well, credit for it, and it gets stolen. It well, may not, and, and this that plug, happens all the time. You don't even realize it. bit and the plugs. I wouldn't be surprised if John's sitting, feeling a lot of pressure on his writing gig, and he's got to start saying, uh-oh. I got to come up with something. I'll do what Howard did. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it's coming directly from him. I mean, let's face it. The what bit he's doing? The, the chicken. The chicken or anything. Like he's oh, 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 oh. He's got to sit in a writing meeting with or, guys or who are earn, top writers. Or even earn your plug. Right. Earn your plug. And he's got to come up with bits. <laughs> and, and I bet you. Wait a minute. There's a chicken bit they're doing? Yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah. know that was for sure. That's what I'm he telling you. I don't know what it is. Oh, that, that's the. Uh, is a chicken. They're having a chicken pick the NFL. 
I think against Terry Bradshaw. Yeah, yeah. against Terry right? Bradshaw. Oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but but of course uh, that's insanity. I'm, I'm a liar. That's insanity. Tracy Morgan's here. You said he's coming in at eight thirty. No, he, I think he's early. I think he's supposed to be here this time. It says eight thirty on the schedule. That schedule was wrong. I, the one I saw. That's a mistake, said, Howard. What? You're kidding. What's the mistake? What's the mistake? That the wrong time was written down. Oh. Oh. On which schedule? What schedule I have in front of me? It says Tracy Morgan, 830. Is that, a, um, uh, is that I'll take one a that break you get every day? Well, I'll take a break and then get Tracy in here. You know what's great about Tracy's career now? He's an edgy, funny, dirty comic who has totally become mainstream now. He's at the Emmys. Yep. He's, uh, he's got and he winning good, Emmys. <laughs> and, you know, un, uh, I, I relate to Tracy because, like, you know, I, I love that Tracy did this. Tracy was, you. I don't know if you were here for this, but he recorded his book. Yeah. Like, you know, he has a new book out. Oh, and he good. did an audio book. He did an audio book. <laughs> and when he was doing the read for the audio book, he went berserk. Well, he started ad living. He couldn't. He didn't want to just read the book. And he uh, started talking about his former castmates on Saturday Night Live, who treated him like shit, much like this fucker John. And what I love about Tracy is he just he just called him out on it. He just yeah. said, "You know, fuck them." When I was working on Saturday Night Live, they treated me like such shit. He said uh, Sherry O'Terry and Chris Kattan. And he says they treated me horribly. And uh, now he goes, "Look where they are, and look where I am." Yeah. I love his bitterness because I, I am a very similar character. To this guy, Tracy Morgan. Well, he remembers how he was treated. That's right. And it, he was reading his book. He went off script. <laughs> yeah, I'll play it for you right here. Here's Tracy Morgan with his audio book. I took my first check from Saturday Night Live, and I moved out the ghetto at 4 o'clock in the morning so <laughs> nobody would see us go. And we was just gone one night. And it took about six months for everybody in the neighborhood to realize I was not even there. And I can remember when I moved, it was on November 11th, because I had a big birthday party at Jimmy's Cafe in the Bronx on November 10th, <laughs> which is my birthday. November 10th, 1996. By the morning of November 11th, 1996, we were gone. <laughs> and in the ghetto, when you move, you should move at night because nobody's up, nobody can see what you got, and nobody can follow you to your new place. So that's why I did that, about 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I can remember being on Saturday Night Live and being feeling like I was at the bottom of the totem pole. I can remember when people like Chris Kattan and Sherry O'Terry would probably look down upon me. I can remember those two, especially those two people treating me like I was the invisible guy. Now look where they at. Sherry O'Terry, she can't even get arrested. Where's Chris Kattan now? <laughs> they never going to host Saturday Night Live. And I don't mean that's not even me, but that's what happened to me over there. They never treated me well. <laughs> there were people that treated me beautifully, like Will Ferrell and Colin Quinn and Molly Shannon. I loved them. But Sherry O'Terry and Chris Kattan, never, I never cared for them either. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> now that I love. <sighs> There's a man. Not afraid to say how he feels. All right, I'll, I'm going to take a break, and then we'll talk to this gentleman, Tracy Morgan. And He's a gentleman. Oh, he's a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't want to talk to Fuck him. Fuck him. <laughs> we'll be back right after these words.